and a woman who risked her life in a hunger strike for equality. I started going blind at day 11. That was rather scary. I mean, we really did believe we were at death's door. Looking for her inspiration in the fight for the Equal Rights Amendment. I want to tell her thank you. I want to tell her what I've done with this. I want to tell her the life I've lived because of her. For much of history, a woman's place was thought to be only in the home. It's perhaps too easy to forget just how hard women had to fight for freedoms taken for granted today. It took true pioneers, including two women who decades ago found the courage to stand up for the cause. In California in 1973, 25-year-old student Zoe Nicholson was also beginning a journey of discovery. Is that you there? It is. Wow, who knew what you would become? Oh, is this you too? Yes, this is uh, getting older and getting ideas about how to aggravate everybody. It seems Zoe's life was mapped out for her. I was raised in an ultra-conservative Catholic home. Mother told me such lovely things as girls don't work for money, girls don't have a major. You were to be a wife? Absolutely. Mother? Indeed. But in the early 70s, grad school would open Zoe's eyes to a different life, a life of activism. At that time, protests were sweeping across the U.S., with young people taking to the streets to campaign for peace in Vietnam, equality between the races, and a new wave of feminism. Campuses were waking up yes. to the women's movement. Yes. How did you experience that? It was so exciting. The whole world was about to burst open. There were women writers, the feminist press. I started marathon reading through the women's movement, obsessed. And I couldn't afford all these books. So the only thing I could really do was to open a bookstore. You opened a bookstore so you could afford to read? That was it. I put on a pair of overhauls. I learned how to do a router saw. We ordered lumber, and boom, we built a woman's bookstore. This is the place that I rented, a woman's bookstore below, and my one-bedroom apartment above. The Magic Speller opened in July 1976. It was the only bookstore in Newport Beach, California, dedicated to selling books written by women. It was women who wrote fiction, science fiction, women in politics. Women would also come to buy tickets for women's concerts. They would get albums by for and about women. So it was anything and everything to do with women. But the magic speller quickly became more than simply a store might be hard to imagine, but no Facebook, no Twitter. People actually came here and they would read the bulletin boards. So feminist bookstore in the 70s was the epicenter of the women's movement. You never knew who was gonna call. They might call for a book that interested them, but sometimes they called for an abortion. They called the bookstore for an abortion. I don't know where to go, what do I do? I'm, my husband's beating me, what do I do? Every month, feminist authors came to Zoe's bookstore for book signings. And in the fall of 1981, a woman arrived who would change Zoe's life forever. There's a moment when you meet that one person that you know sees the world similarly to what you see. It's like that blue diamond match that's going to rub up against you and set you on fire and make trouble. <laughs> Beautiful trouble is the expression. Sonia Johnson was an author and activist ERA! who had been excommunicated from the Mormon church. I feel as if they were so threatened that they were not rational. Due to her vocal support for a proposed amendment to the U.S. Constitution, we're willing to give our lives to secure justice for women in this country. Justice, remember, we vote in November. 
The Equal Rights Amendment, which would enshrine in the Constitution equal legal rights for all citizens, regardless of sex. Why isn't it in there? Why aren't we guaranteed the Bill of Rights in the United States Constitution? I just couldn't figure it out. Any amendment to the U.S. Constitution must be ratified by at least three quarters of state legislatures. By 1982, 35 out of the necessary 38 states had approved the ERA. Congress had imposed a deadline. We only had a few years left. We had to do anything we could think of, and many did, to try to turn these remaining 15 states to green states by June 30th, 1982. We needed three more to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. As the deadline approached, Zoe felt she had to take action. She spoke with Sonia, the one person who she knew would feel the same. I said to her, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I meant that most literally. I wasn't speaking metaphorically. I was saying, Sonia, what are you and I going to do? And she said the right thing. And I said, well, I don't care what it is. The answer will be yes. And she said, it's going to be a fast. I said, fine. Tell me where, tell me when, I will be there. She said, okay, good, I, I have others to call. And that was the end of that phone call. It was a decision that would propel Zoe into the headlines, expose her to ridicule, and push her to the brink of death. While Lynn had won the right to be treated as an equal at work, Zoe Nicholson was campaigning with activist Sonia Johnson to include equal rights for women in the U.S. Constitution. Sonia said, are you willing to die for this? She said that. And I said, yes, you were willing to die for it. Still it? In May 1982, Zoe would risk her life for an amendment to the Constitution guaranteeing equal rights for all, regardless of gender. To grab headlines and four state legislatures to take notice, Zoe, Sonia, and five other women planned to fast. All of my heroes had fasted. Mahatma Gandhi had fasted. Alice Paul had fasted. She was the author of the Equal Rights Amendment. The first wave women of the suffrage movement had fasted and been force fed. It struck middle C in my heart. The women decided to hold their hunger strike in Illinois, one of the key states due to vote on the amendment before the rapidly approaching deadline of June 30th, 1982. The local paper came to photograph our last meal. So we ate everything that wasn't nailed down. Like? Fried chicken, uh, three half gallons of Ben and Jerry's, pizza. We ate it all. 44 days before the deadline, the women took up residence in the rotunda of the state capitol building in Springfield. It's really emotional to be here. This is the first time Zoe has set foot here since her hunger strike 37 years ago. We were here every day from 10 to 2. We sat here on folding chairs. Then behind us was a big banner with the days ticking by. We sat here for 37 days, fasting on water. Nine days into their fast, a group of feminists dominates the rotunda of the Illinois Capitol in Springfield, a group inspired by Sonia Johnson, excommunicated by the Mormon Church for her feminist positions. We want to touch the hearts of these legislators. We want to convert them to the principle of equality and liberty for women, and that's what fasts can accomplish if they're done properly. 
After 10 days, the woman's health began to deteriorate. I started going blind at day 11. That was rather scary. And I had no idea if my eyes would clear. And then Mary Ann Bell's lung collapsed. And uh, I think Sonia suffered the most, actually. She was probably the thinnest of all of us. And she was under enormous stress. And over the course of the week, Sonia had been taken to the hospital at least three times. They were insisting on giving her a transfusion, but um, we had already signed legal papers saying we denied permission for any kind of medical intervention. One of the fasters, Sonia Johnson, is now using a wheelchair because she feels so weak. But all of the women say there are no plans to stop now. You don't look good, hon. How many days in was this? June 6th um, is probably 18 days. 18 days without food. Yeah, but the real hunger passes around 12, where you, you just can't imagine. But now it, you're basically spaced out. How did you guys get through it? I mean, did you talk about food? Sonia just thought food was all she wanted to talk about. That's it all. And if somebody said, you know, let, let us go over there. And, and Sonia would go, lettuce? What'd you like on your lettuce? How do you want your lettuce? What kind of lettuce? Bib lettuce? Romaine lettuce? So that was her wicked sense of humor. Was that torturing to you, or was that actually... There's no torture when you're doing what you were born to do. But the women face more than hunger and sickness. They face staunch opposition from conservative anti-ERA campaigners. There were people yelling witches, calling us names. They would yell, get home and make dinner for your husband. Who's taking care of your kids? People would spill food on us. They would order pizzas to go for us. They were eating chocolate bars in front of us, as if we're going to give away equality for a lousy chocolate bar. A man was arrested with our names carved in one of seven knives, and he was detained but never charged. I mean, he was coming to hurt you? Kill us. 36 days into their fast, Illinois voted on the amendment and rejected it. With that, the chance to amend the Constitution was lost. Time ran out for the Equal Rights Amendment today. The 24-word statement pledging equality for women under the Constitution fell three states short of ratification. The dream that the women had risked everything to realize was over. It was devastating. We were crushed. We knew that it meant that we would not be protected under the law. It was incomprehensible. It was like all your blood drained out. It's like all the light in the room went out. We had lost the battle, the war. We had lost. But despite the defeat, Zoe says the fast changed her life for the better. When you offer to die for something, something happens to you. And so all the work that I've done stems from that one moment when Sonia asked me and I said yes, because at that moment I, I could no longer think of myself as small or unable, or that I wasn't really serious about my commitment to civil rights. We had found a sisterhood that was a camaraderie that has never happened again in my life and never will. But Zoe and Sonia would follow different paths. While Zoe went on to become an author and activist for equality, Sonia gradually retreated from public life. I want to tell her thank you. I want to tell her what I've done with this. I want to tell her the life I've lived because of her. I owe that to her.
More than 1,600 miles away in California, Zoe Nicholson is starting her search for the activist who inspired her, Sonia Johnson. Welcome to our library. Thank you. Catherine Sorrells is a professor at California State University, specializing in gender and feminist theory. I actually studied Sonia when I was in my PhD program, and I think you can probably add even more to what I know, but obviously she was a really strong, radical feminist. Of course. I have felt the thread of that experience. I mean, she had affected my life so deeply. Well. I did some research and I found an audio interview with Sonia, quite recent, and she's talking about the uh, work you all did for the ERA. So I'm going to play that. I'd like to begin by saying that doing that fast, we only drank water for all that time. We fasted under the banner that said, women hunger for justice. What I did it for was because there were women all over this world. Mm who would see this and they would realize that there were women who considered the rights of women worthy of giving our lives. I have a passionate heart and I'd have given my life again and again and again without giving it a thought. That's Sonia. Yeah. The recording offers more than a chance to hear Sonia's voice. We said, we said, okay. We couldn't think of any place to go in the United States. And then somebody emailed us about this women's community in Alabama. And there were 16 women, no males allowed. But Alabama. Yeah, really. <laughs> Alabama. This is a critical clue. Zoe now knows where Sonia was living in 2010 when the interview was recorded. So I've done some digging and I have an address for you uh, where you might want to follow up. Great. I've never had, like, even a mailing address okay. for her. Thanks so much. I got up this morning with absolutely no idea what was going to happen. And I got to meet somebody who studied Sonia, and I got to hear Sonia's voice. This was a big, big surprise and gives me great hope. And it's all on this little yellow post-it in my wallet. It's worth more to me than, than anything else that's ever been in my wallet. Equal rights activist and author Zoe Nicholson is also feeling optimistic. I just got goosebumps, to tell you the truth. It's so beautiful here. Zoe has a lead in her search for role model Sonia Johnson. I feel a bit like Hansel and Gretel are following breadcrumbs. The search is taking her deep into rural Alabama towards a unique community occupied entirely by women. There are women-only communities around the country, and um, maybe this is the one where she lives. I hope I get to hug her if I get to see her. I hope I'm welcome. So many ifs. She's hoping veteran resident Rand Hall may have information about Sonia's whereabouts. It's wonderful to see you. Come on in. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I'm very sure. Come on in. Thank you so much. Welcome to Alabama. Like most of the women here, Rand has chosen to live off the beaten track. There's only one woman in my 70 years that gave me the gift of knowing that I'm willing to die for equality. And I use it. I wield it like a sword, I don't mind saying. And then obviously the person to whom I'm referring is Sonia Johnson. Well, Sonia is as dear to me as she is to you, and just as inspiring. And Sonia built the house that is directly to the woods there. I feel such a sense of urgency because I know how much older than me Sonia is. And uh, it sounds so abrupt, but 
Is she still alive? Oh, and she's very much alive. What you're saying is that I'm not too late. Oh, no, she's very much alive and still doing wonderful work. But I have a hope, I have a prayer that she might actually be here. I'm so sorry to tell you that she no longer lives here. She left here in 2011. I understand how much you want to see Sonia. I'm hoping. And I need to let you know that I'm not sure where she is right now, but we will figure out a way to get in touch with her and to reach her so that you can see her again. And I know it'll mean as much to her as it does to you. Two things that are important that happened today. Sonia's alive. That's a big deal to me. And there's a chance Sonia might want to see me. <laughs> and uh, that's, that makes this old girl sing. For nearly 40 years, Zoe Nicholson has longed to see fellow equal rights activist Sonia Johnson. I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, sorting out in my head what's about to happen to meet Sonia after all this time. Sonia's former neighbor, Rand, has reached out to her and arranged for the two women to meet. She's been off the grid for so long, so unavailable, so clearly unavailable, that after all these years, for her to say yes is an extraordinary gift. Now the moment has finally come for Zoe and Sonia to reunite. Sonia? Here I am. Here you are. You know, I often wonder what I would say to you if I ever had the chance to do it again. <laughs> oh. Come sit down here. Let's talk. I'm really anxious to say to you a few things. I really wasn't certain you'd want to see me. Well, I wasn't certain you'd want to see <laughs> me. All right, that's just ridiculous now. <laughs> that is just <laughs> totally ridiculous. Oh, you're I am blessed to see you. Zoe, if I were a crying woman, I would just burst into tears well, to see you. I am a crying woman, and I can cry enough for both of us. You know, I had talked to a hundred women trying to get them to do that fast. All of them thought it was too scary, but you said, I'm, I want to do this. I thought, you know, she's going to think, this is crazy. I mean, we'll die. Well, it is crazy, and maybe we would have died, but did I care? No, not at all. Never will. <laughs> fearless. You were fearless. I still am. However, not till you did I realize the strength, the commitment that I'm capable of. I had to find you and tell you that because of you, I know that I am a person who is willing to die for my beliefs. It was very touching. I had no idea uh, that she felt that way or, well, I just, I was stunned by some of the things she said. It was, it was beautiful. After losing the ERA vote, Sonia continued her fight for equality. She even ran for president in 1984. But as the years went by, Sonia gradually retreated from public life. It was like the women's movement died right before my yes. eyes. I was in such pain about that. You know, we were going to make a new world. There, nothing was happening. So I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll just be somebody else. So I changed my name and just kind of got over my broken heart. Well, lived with my broken heart. But while Sonia and Zoe recovered from the pain of their defeat, the impact of their actions rippled out. What do we want? DRA! When do we want it? Now! 
the fact that women are not protected under the Constitution is the most absurd thing I've ever heard. A new generation of women stepped up to continue fighting for equality. We want to turn the slogan of Me Too into the reality of a constitutional amendment that will actually mean protections and support to American women. Yes. Making progress towards an equal rights amendment to the U.S. Constitution. On May 30th, 2018, in the very same building where Zoe and Sonia fasted, the state of Illinois finally voted to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. Look what's happening in this country. We lived to see what's happening in yes. this country. We used to say the future is female. Well, the present is now female. We yes. are living in a new world that we helped to make. <laughs> Now Zoe intends to keep on fighting and keep in touch with Sonia. Look at that. Oh no, is that me? Yeah. I'm not following breadcrumbs anymore as I have been. I actually have a mailing address. I actually have an email address. I just look awful. Yeah, you were sickly for much of the fast. Well, it's always moving to find out that somebody loves you and loves you so much and has loved you so long. Day 25, you're passed out. That's scary looking, isn't it? She made me feel that my life was important. You can't have anything but just a lot of joy about that. That's all of us. That's probably the most important picture here. Look at them, aren't they? Not to lay my eyes on the woman who gave me the courage to be fearless in the face of social justice demands was so thrilling. And I will forever now have all this in my mind, finding inspiration and carrying on for as long as I can. I can't tell you how much you meant to me today, you beautiful woman. Two pioneering women received the gift of inspiration that gave them the strength to take a stand and make a change. And they're still fighting for a better world, not just for themselves, but also for others.